Hi, Lawrence from Juniper Networks Education Services here. If you're interested in learning more about asymmetric traffic with a flow-based device, be sure to check out our Advanced Juno Security course. It's also covered in our Juniper Networks Certified Professional Security exam, so you'll want to know it if you're pursuing a JNCI PSEC. For full course details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the course. Now let's get to your learning bite. Welcome to Juniper Learning Bites. My name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer inside of education services within Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the asymmetric traffic with a flow-based device learning byte. Now at this point you might be asking yourself, what is asymmetric traffic and why does it matter to me? Well before I answer that question, let's at least discuss this illustration this little topology here and then we'll discuss what asymmetric traffic is. Here on the far left, the bottom left side, we have the user who's connecting to their local router via the GIGI003 interface. And then their local router is dual home to ISP A and ISP B. ISP A being the primary and ISP B being the backup. And then from there we have the FTP server on the far right and the user wants to communicate with this FTP server. Well as you can tell there's a few paths that the user can do it through. However the user who connects to his local router is going to use the GIGI001 interface to get to ISP A primarily. And so that's what this router here that is connected the local router for the user is configured to do. These other devices the administrator of this local router has no control over. So with asymmetric traffic we have initiating traffic leaving one interface. See it's leaving the one interface going through ISP A. ISP A is the primary and then the return traffic returning or entering on a different interface for this local router. This creates that asymmetric traffic whereas if it was symmetric we would have the return traffic coming through ISP A and returning on GIGI001 for that local router. Now something to point out here too is we can have asymmetric traffic flows with multiple devices. We could have multiple uh, local routers here and having the initiating traffic leave one router and then return on the other router. But in this learning byte, we're going to focus on just uh, asymmetric traffic with one router, like with what we're seeing in this example. Now normally, this really isn't a big deal for your basic router or, or layer 3 device because it doesn't care. It doesn't care that it's coming in on a different interface. It just wants to be able to forward that traffic towards whatever destination it needs to do. So not a big deal. However, let's introduce a flow-based device. You know, what does asymmetric traffic have to do with that? Or what happens there? This device on the far left, this blue device here, that's, that's an SRX series device. As you know, that's a flow-based device. You know, granted, it can be put into packet mode and with the branch series devices, you can have selective packet filters. But in this case, and in most cases, it's going to be running in flow mode. And so that initiating traffic leaves that local router, that SRX device, and then that return traffic comes back a different path and it gets dropped because it's showing up somewhere where it's unexpected and so that's a problem that's not supposed to happen all right so let's look a little more into why that happens you know this is the flow module for a, an SRX series device and so uh, what happens here is on the far left you can see we got our per packet pleasers per packet filters uh, traffic enters through there there's you know there's none configured as far as filters and pleasers and just bypass that but that happens outside the flow module that's why that's there and then we have you know you know we have to decide or the router or the SRX device has to decide if it matches a session well this is a new session so it doesn't so it takes that first packet path it goes through screens static nav if that's configured or destination at then we have the route lookup then when the route lookup happens 
Next, we do the forwarding lookup, and that forwarding lookup, when that happens, we do the zone lookup, because when we do the forwarding lookup, we look at the egress interface. We figure out, okay, where is this traffic going? Okay, we have this route in the forwarding table, or this prefix in the forwarding table that says, it goes out this interface. Well, this interface is associated with this certain zone. So that's very important to know in this situation because what happens here is if that return traffic is hitting an interface that is not in the same zone as the interface that the initiating traffic left, then it's going to drop the packet. And so the thing is to remember, like even though it's coming back on a different interface, we can, as long as we have that other interface in the same zone, this is going to work. And that's pretty cool to know that because a lot of times people don't know that. They have asymmetric traffic. They try everything to get it working and it just doesn't work. Well, if they put those two outside interfaces in the same zone, then they can get things working. All right, so let's jump to an example. You know, this is the same illustration here, a little more detail. We've got a few interfaces on here so we can actually track those interfaces. And so we're going to look. We're going to see that we're going to have initiating traffic take the path through ISP A. And then we're going to have return traffic take the path through ISP B. And it's going to get dropped at first, but then we're going to mess around with the zones here to get it working. Check this out. All right, so let's jump to the CLI and check this out. All right, here's the CLI for SRX1. That's this local router here for the user. So then let's actually to really start it out, let's actually open an FTP session to that remote FTP server. We're just going to use FTP default port, specify a user and a password. It's not working, and that's okay. We're expecting it not to work right now because we have to fix it. So let's check out the flow. Oh, we need to restart that transfer. Okay, it's going to be—it's doing it again. You can see that in the background. Actually, we want to check the uh, since it's just opening the initiating port. And the problem with this is I could have actually specified the destination prefix. That's what I was doing wrong there. And you can see that we have it. You know, it's the same thing as what we saw with the application FTP traffic. And the reason why I wanted to use the destination prefix is because. Uh, this is just the control traffic. We're going to have the, uh, when it actually opens and passes the actual data, you know, this will show us as well. But as you can see here, we have the traffic coming in Giggy 003 and this interface here. And then we have it leaving, you know, expecting to return, because this is going to be the return traffic right here, is what it's expecting coming in on Giggy 001. You can see there's NAT happening here. This is the, the actual source address we're sending it from. And then the return traffic is sending it to that 105051 address. That's because they're source NAT. But there's nothing coming back. We're not getting anything. It's because it's dropping that packet. So let's go ahead and uh, stop this FTP session. And let's jump into the configuration mode. And let's, uh, let's configure that. So security zones. You can see we have that Giggy001. I'm going to pull up the... Uh, PowerPoint again so you can see that. So we have Giggy001 and Giggy002 in two separate zones. We talked about how if we put those in the same zone, we're going to get a lot more success here with the, this asymmetric routing. So we're going to delete uh, that interface out of the secondary zone and set it in the primary zone. So you can see, set in the primary zone. Secondary zone still there. It's not a big deal. It just doesn't have that interface associated with it. All right, let's commit that now. Let's get back up that, uh, that FTP session. Get that going. All right, this looks a lot better. We actually made it there. Okay, let's transfer this file. We can actually see the asymmetric traffic by looking at the statistics on the interfaces. Copy that. You can see it's going along. And uh, let's just move that one window out of the way there. So let's jump to the actual, back to the CLI. Let's monitor these interfaces. So we'll just do a run 
monitor interface traffic monitor interface traffic monitor interface traffic and one more monitor interface traffic all right so let's look at the initiating traffic and we're gonna I'm gonna pull up that uh, presentation again so we can see that a little better so we can see this and hopefully the transfer lasts long enough for us to get through this if not we'll restart it not a big deal all right so we can see it's entering on giggy 003 we see one thing to point out here is you see how where it's entering we have less traffic and the return is coming on giggy 002 and we know that we have a lot more packets per second because we're downloading the file so we'll use that as our way to gauge what is incoming or initiating and what is return traffic so here we have giggy 003 it's coming in you can see that with user 1 and then it's leaving giggy 001 so you can see the output giggy 001 that's great that's what we're expecting okay so an ISPA we see it coming in on Giggy 001, leaving Giggy 002. That's great. We see it's coming in and leaving ISPA. And then it's going to go to that remote router. And we can see it coming in on Giggy 002 and then leaving on Giggy 003. So we see the output on the far right here. It's got that you know lower number. And then it's coming in because FTP server's on Giggy 003. It's coming in on Giggy 003. You know, this is the return traffic now coming in on Giggy 003 and it's leaving on Giggy 001. We can see that right here where the output, so we're seeing that high number on the output there going through Giggy 001. That's what we're expecting. And on ISPB, we see that higher number coming in on Giggy 001 and leaving on Giggy 002. That's what we want to see. And then I'll move the CLI over so we can look at the local SRX1 device, jump back over there, and we see that it's actually coming in on Giggy 002, this is the return traffic again. You can see that's coming in, that's what we want to see. Then it's leaving on Giggy 003. So that's the path. We have asymmetric traffic flowing, it's working. And then I want to show you one other really cool thing. Now look at this. You can just scroll back up to. Actually, no, I need to jump out of configuration mode first. Then I'll be able to get that. Now, the thing I want to point out here, you know, this is the control right here, but we want to look at the actual data flow here. Now, the thing I want to point out is, you know, this is the initiating traffic, shows that it's coming in, it's expecting it coming in on Giggy 003, and the return traffic is expecting it coming in on Giggy 001. Now, that might be a little confusing because we know, we looked at, looked at it up here, and it's coming in on Giggy 002. We can see that with the, uh, the input. So it's coming in, the return traffic is coming in on Giggy002. Well, the reason why it does that is to try not to confuse because it's expecting on Giggy001, even though it's coming in on Giggy002, it's the same zone. So it's just going to increment those packets. We can see there's quite a few bytes, quite a few packets. It's just going to increment that on that Giggy001 interface as far as the flow in the session table is concerned. But it's recording the statistics in the forwarding table for Giggy002. So that's just something to point out that you know it's still going to accept the traffic there. It's going to show up in the flow there, but it's actually working coming through the correct interface. The asymmetric it just allows the asymmetric flows to work properly. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. You know, in this learning byte, we discussed what asymmetric traffic means. You know, what it is, and then we demonstrated how to overcome asymmetric traffic scenarios on an SRX series device. So again, that's the end. However, I hope this learning bite will be useful for you. And as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.